Hello everybody, Mr. Tiller here. Today we're going to talk about soil horizons. We've observed in the soils that we collected these layers of soils as we progress vertically from the top. These layers from this point forward we're going to refer to as horizons. What we're going to do is give our horizons a letter designation which describes some characteristic that is typical of a given soil. These typical descriptions we're going to use letters for O, A, E, B, C. Uh, we're going to add another one to this particular model, R, and we're going to use those designations to describe the horizons that we see within our soils. Let's define a couple of terms before we go any further. Organic matter, when we talk about organic matter in a soil, we're talking about any particle that was either once living or is currently living. Things like leaves, um, the insects, any kind of like earthworms. Um, mostly we're talking about vegetation in the soil, but it could also be anything else that was once living. Humus, another term that we're going to see. Not hummus. Hummus is something you put on pita bread. This is humus. Humus is partially decomposed organic matter. And that's going to be an important component of our soil. Also parent material. When we talk about the parent material of a soil, we're talking about <coughs> the starting point of a soil. So try to imagine what was there before the soil started to develop. That material is from which the soil will develop, the parent material. So in the case of Wisconsin, mostly that's going to be glacial debris, at least in our area of Wisconsin. It could also be solid rock. Uh, in the case of the Hawaiian Islands, it could be um, volcanic in nature, any, anything that is sort of the starting point of a soil. So each of these letter designations, O, A, E, B, C, and R, is going to have a typical characteristic. This is going to be a generalized model of a soil profile. From this generalized model, what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can apply that to the specific data which we collected in our soils. So we've collected soils, we've created our little mini profiles. Can we apply this model to the data, our mini profiles, and see if we can outline and identify the horizons which are present in our particular soils? So typically speaking, the O horizon is going to be a horizon found on top of the soil that is characterized by a lot of organic matter. So right now it's fall. If we went out to our woodland, we would see lots and lots of leaves on top of the of our ground. That leaf layer is the O layer. That leaf layer eventually is going to start to decompose. It will um, probably shrink in size as the organic matter is decomposed. It can change throughout the year, but that top layer, that is the O layer or the organic layer. The A horizon is a mineral layer mixed with that partially decomposed organic layer from the top. And that is the characteristic soil that we see um, around this area that is real dark. The dark color indicates lots of organic matter. That's what we think of as the top soil. Um, in most cases that is as far as we go in soils. Um, but there's lots underneath there. But that's like that big, good, rich, dark soil that we're used to seeing uh, when those farmers in the springtime are turning the, the fields over, etc. A couple of other horizons here. The E horizon, E stands for eluviation. And I'm going to show you a, a little uh, animation here in a second which explains this. But basically think of the E layer as the layer of the soil where particles are removed or leached. The B horizon then just below it is going to be the area where those removed particles accumulate. Okay, And then the C is the partially uh, decomposed parent material uh, under which you'll find the solid parent material. R can sometimes just be solid bedrock or the underlying rock. Um, that parent material, as I mentioned before, can also be take the form of something else like um, oh, glacial material or something else. So I'm going to show you an animation now. Let's just switch over to that quickly. And if we follow along here and take a quick peek, 
we can uh, kind of see how these various layers or, or horizons of soils um, develop. And I'll go ahead and play the voice here too, just so you have a little variety for my own voice. Alluviation is the downward transport of particles, especially small clays and colloids, from the upper part of the soil profile. It generally occurs in the E horizon. Should alluviation continue, the remaining soil layer may become depleted of clays and colloids, and only resistant materials would remain. This horizon may be described as leached. Material removed from the upper horizons by alluviation is deposited further down the profile by illuviation. Alluviation is the accumulation of materials washed down the soil profile. This may lead to a clay-rich B horizon. So you can see that's a, a generalized model for how the various profiles or horizons develop. So we're at a point now where you should be ready to grab your own soils and start to apply some of these designations to uh, the soils that we collected. So on your soils, for each layer, anytime you see a distinct layer of soil, look at the characteristics of that soil and try to apply a letter designation representing one of the horizons to each layer. Okay, so when we're done, we should have um, a whole bunch of letters next to our mini profiles. Good luck, and let me know if you have any questions.